My name is Carolyn Clark, and I think that it's very important that we are given the opportunity to know Howard Meyer, who was a modernist architect in the 1950s and 60s and 70s in Dallas, Texas. And sometime in the 1980s, uh, some friends and I decided that we were going to make documentaries of all these living people, and Howard Meyer happened to be one of them. And so we made a documentary showing Mr. Meyer and uh, mostly his, uh, his work at Temple Emmanuel and his other houses. And that sat in the can, as you say, for about 20 years. And nobody saw it, and nobody used it. And the original idea, the original intent, of course, was to make sure that it got to the schools of architecture. Well, we didn't really have enough money at the time to make sure that that happened, so it sat there. And my dear friend Mark Gunderson was the keeper of the keys, as it was, and uh, he didn't let them be uh, destroyed. And so they were at the AIA for all these years. And I woke up one morning and decided, you know, that's just terrible. We can't leave that in the can. We have to do something with Mr. Meyer. <laughs> and so a year ago, we decided to look at that original film. And my good friend Mitchell Johnson said, oh, it's really lovely. Well, in retrospect, it really isn't lovely. <laughs> so what we are doing is recreating a documentary about Howard Meyer because he was the most important modernist in Dallas, Texas, modern architect. And we want to preserve that and to um, protect the works that he has still standing and to make sure that it gets to the right audiences. And you, the architecture student, are the right audience. I had the great pleasure of knowing Howard Marr for my whole lifetime and a lot of his. And I had the pleasure of living in two houses that he designed and having been the owner and builder with him of, of one of his houses. And I feel privileged to have known Howard both as a cousin, a family member, and as a great architect. And am thrilled to be able to bring this story to you. I was wondering to myself, well, why is architecture so important to me? And why did I have to have a house by Howard Marr? And I think my earliest recollection of Howard was maybe when I was four or five years old. And he and his wife, Sean, must have come to visit my family. I lived in Houston. And Sean and Howard were there, and I can remember distinctly being enamored with Howard. I thought he was just wonderful. He let me stand on his shoes and dance me around in the, in the sun parlor in those days, in the sun parlor, and I thought he was just wonderful. And in retrospect, I was wondering, well, really, why were Sean and Howard there? and What were they talking about? Well, I think they were probably talking about designing some furniture for my brother. And as you know, Howard did a lot of furniture design in his early days. And this was very, very important to me and, uh, as I grew older because I uh, fell in love with this furniture. It was absolutely wonderful. And fortunately, my brother had gone off to boarding school, so I got to use this wonderful desk. It was L-shaped. And uh, the top of it, it was probably birch, which is very reminiscent of a lot that Howard has done in his houses. It was either birch or pine desk. And the top of it was uh, red leather. And one of the uh, supporting uh, beams or pieces was a piece of steel. 
And besides the desk, which was very functional, very functional, was a huge piece of furniture that must have been eight feet long. And it was everything. It was bookcases, it was two drawers uh, for clothing. On the end of it was what we called a, a shoe box for his shoes. It was an enormous piece of furniture. So I think I have been exposed to architecture and to Howard forever in, in, in my youth, you know. It got in my system, right? Somehow or other. And um, then during the war years, when Howard was in the Engineer Corps, I believe, and he was designing um, uh, housing for the, for the Army. I happened to have been going to Hockaday at the time. And so I was in their house a lot. I was with Howard and Sean quite a bit during those years. But Howard was probably not, not around very much because of, his, because of his duty. So the relationship was there and it was there forever. And then when I moved to uh, Dallas in 1950, of course, we were very, very involved as a family because Sean was my father's cousin. They had all come from Waco. And there is a lot of family that was there. And um, so we were familial. We, we, we knew one another quite a lot. And I had gotten married and lived in a very, very small house on Walnut Hill Lane and decided that the only thing that would make me happy would be <laughs> to have a house designed by Howard Meyer. Well, at the same time that I thought I should have a house designed by Howard Meyer, um, they were thinking of building uh, a new temple. So this was a very busy time in Howard's life. He had already built, I would say, uh, two of his most important houses, built many houses before that. Um, but one of them was the uh, Lipschey House, which is on Nakoma, and the other one was the Zale House, which was on Reims. And these were large, imposing, modern houses. He, uh, Howard also had several on Rockbrook. He built four or five different houses on Rockbrook. And actually, one down the street here that he had built for the Shannons, which was subsequently bought by Ray Nasher. So it's the Nasher house now with a lot of wonderful sculpture. Uh, but anyhow, I thought I had to have a Howard Meyer house. And so it took us at least, oh, I'd say a year and a half to design a house. And what we, what we ended up with was a house that Howard was very proud of. He liked this house. He loved this house better than some of his others. There are lots of features in the Rockbrook house that are not in the other houses. And I think probably that has to do with the use of wood. Uh, for some reason or other, I got it in my head that I didn't want little narrow strips of wood on the floor. I wanted big, wide, old looking beams. And the Howard came up with teak wood. I bet you there are not too many houses in Dallas that have teak floors. The whole house is wood, whether it's fir or teak or fir plywood and windows. And to live in a house like this was an extraordinary experience. There were no other houses in Dallas quite like this in the 19. 60s. It was built in 1957. And I think that we, Howard captured something. Um, we give each other credit for it. I, I think he captured my personality in some way. And because there's a very Japanese feel and uh, quality to it, there is a lot of grass cloth and the use of kind of shoji doors to separate 
the upper bedrooms and the bedrooms from the hall. I don't know where I picked up on all that, but Howard incorporated it and it made sense at the time. So it has, and, the, and I think because of the clear story windows, it has somewhat of a Japanese feel to it. So this was a very, very important house um, architecturally. We lived here for um, 18 or 20 years, 20, 20 years. And um, my children were all in college and um, I was divorced and decided that it was too much house to take care of. And so I went to a smaller house, which was also had an architectural difference and an architectural element to it. Um, I always needed that. And so I was there for about eight years and um, Jim Clark and I found our way to one another and we both liked architecture. And after about eight years, decided to get married. Well, we were very fortunate that at the time that we got married, the owners of the Nakoma house were being transferred to Cincinnati. And it was somewhat of a secret because he was um, CEO of Sanger Harris and I happened to be working for them. So I knew that he was leaving. So without putting the house on the market, we went over to see them and we made a deal. So we got uh, possession of the Nakoma house. And that in itself is quite a story because I'd only been in it once but I knew that it had been mistreated. And I think it's all right to say that. Uh, it had been mistreated in a way that all of the, um, the built-ins had been destroyed. And there was much about the house that needed to be uh, reconstructed. And so Jim and I had a wonderful time doing as much as we could do. And uh, we, we reconstructed, refurbished the Nakoma house so that it looked like Howard once, once again uh, with all of the wonderful steel casement windows and there again um, the use of wood and brick on the inside of the house. When you live in a Howard Meyer house, you have the opportunity to live outside as well as inside. There's nature is all around you. The trees are all around you. The shadows. Howard was the wonderful at creating shadows from outside.